Well, think about some of your earliest childhood memories, and chances are they were spent on a carnival ride, maybe even on a tilt a whirl. About 70 million people ride a tilt a whirl each year, and one city in Rice County is known as the birthplace of the ride. And this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lordson takes us to Faribault for. If you say tilt a whirl, everybody knows it, no matter where you are in the country. And if you circle back on the history of this iconic ride, it'll lead you to the middle of Rice County. It was actually invented by a local guy named Herbert Selner. He was kind of a inventor of sorts anyways. In 1922, Selner put his son in a chair with wheels, then put the chair on a kitchen table and spun it. And the tilt a whirl was born. Selner began making the full-size version of the ride at his factory in Faribault. It's a story Tammy and Doug Schluter know well. They own the historic Hutchinson house in town. The first date, I got sick on it. When we ask our bed and breakfast guests, have you ever ridden on a Tilt-A-Whirl? It always leads in with a smile. Owning a bed and breakfast in Faribault and wanting to promote it, we were thinking, okay, what can we do to um, maybe get Faribault on the map a little bit? And the Schluters weren't the first to wonder that. A city full of history was about to take tourists for a ride. It was good memories, very good memories. Now you of still fun. don't get sick? Nope, I don't get sick. We should do a story just on that. <laughs> Peggy Kylan also wondered why they weren't promoting their whirling icon. She told Tammy, and Tammy contacted Cody Petapiece of Harley's Auto Salvage. He had some of Selner's old tilt-a-whirl tubs on his lot. His grandfather had plans for them. I was on board from the start. He thought that it would be a great idea to place these tilt-a-whirl rides throughout the community. And he never had the opportunity to do that because he had passed away. So Cody donated the tubs with the condition that they would always stay in Faribault and never be sold. One of them was actually refurbished in an episode of American Restoration on the History Channel. The production company called them and said, this is perfect for us, we'd love to do it. In 2015, the tubs were unveiled on each end of downtown. And just like at a carnival or fair, they instantly drew a crowd. Holiday photos, wedding pics, and the occasional selfie have become a familiar sight for business owners. It's really been a lot of fun. It's really been a boon to downtown, uh, getting people back downtown. Present to past, with the tubs also came the memories. Uh, elderly lady, probably in her 80s, and she was telling her granddaughter that that's where grandpa gave me my first kiss. So, and she was crying, and that was just a real, real special thing for her. So. Those stories I just love to hear. There are plans for a third tub outside the new distillery. <laughs> Bemidji has Paul and Babe. Blue Earth has the Jolly Green Giant. Faribault has an iconic ride. And those who help make it happen <laughs> are pretty happy. They gave it a whirl. What better way to sell Faribault than to say, well, this is where it all started. I liked the idea of having bumper stickers like, I got tilted in Faribault oh, or I got whirled in Faribault. Yeah. And she usually shot those down. So. <laughs> Maybe someday, right? Yeah. Maybe someday, yes, exactly. John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. The group that's helped get the tub set up in Faribault say they want to make sure any future restoration projects involve former Selner employees. A fundraiser for the third tub is expected to begin in the near future.